Oh my god. Finally, finally secured this guy. Why beef boss? What? You look like somebody walked over your grave. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and uh, it's a well-rounded week. Started out slow, but Hasbro kicked it into high gear with, uh, well, a lot of the usual properties we talk about on here, but there's also Haya Toys, and there's Boss Fight, and there's Super 7, and there's, what else is there? Let's see. There's some Kyoto, and okay, then it goes into Hasbro, but hey, toys are toys. Dang, I love the weekly. It's been a bit since Haya Toys got a wild hair and announced that they would be doing 1 12th scale action figures while continuing their 1 18th fair. It started with Judge Dredd where they announced, hey, we're not only doing this size, we're also doing this size, but they haven't shown anything in this size yet. They're too busy filling out this size. It turns out that the Exquisite Super, am I getting that right? Exquisite Super Robocop is gonna be the first six inch figure to market. Again, like we talked about back when they were doing their big property reveal spree earlier this year, I don't know what exquisite super means when it comes to their tiers, because there's also exquisite basic and stylist. I think stylist is more statue, exquisite basic is on the cheaper end, but still having super articulation, and then their top tier, going on hunch here, is exquisite super because if this is exquisite super oh man just look at all the articulation and sculpt here we've had a few offerings of robocop over the years from NECA and muffex and i think figma is there another one is there a model kit series too somewhere in there but this seems to take all those necessary elements wraps it all together <laughs> ties it with a bow i mean here you go boom there's hand options weapons muzzle effects swappable battle damage parts and <laughs> some nightmare inducing alternate faces <sighs> At first I was stumped as to why there are two different sizes for the Auto 9 pistol, but then I realized the smaller one goes in the opening thigh holster gimmick. Makes it easier to fit with all the engineering involved down there. But then it's big and imposing when it's actually in the hand. If I had one gripe, I would point out the mitten looking hands. They're just kind of robotic, well, I, yeah, robotic, but it looks like just a but the rest of the figure is beautifully sculpted and I cannot help loving a nice subtle purple tint when it comes to a Robocop. $90 due out spring of 2023 and keep your eye out on Haya Toys because like I said, they're also about to announce, hopefully about to announce a 1 12th scale Judge Dreadline along with Rambo and Naruto. Naruto, you know what I'm saying. Something else that we already knew was on the upcoming Tasty Plastic menu is the Boss Fight Epic Hack Skeletons. These went up for pre-order this week in four different flavors. You have your basic skeleton in gladiator garb, all gussied up, ready to entertain you in the pits of the arena. Then there's the banana tent bone barbarian who I think out of all of them feels the most natural, the, the most likely to be dug up in a battlefield and reanimated. The green apple pirate makes me think I need more pirates in general, especially if I'm gonna get this and stand them with other pirates. There's just not enough pirate toys out there. But the most striking, the most eye-catching to me is the Blueberry Grim Spectre. Much like the pirate, the color just pops. It jumps out at you. Yes, the other two are more natural looking, but the green and the blue just, oh, oh you're gonna pick that out in a crowd. More than that though, I think this is the easiest to fudge into other displays. It just looks natural, being a reaper. Basically, there's just a fun supernatural element at play here. Plus from what I hear, you can swap out a lot of the overlays. Not everything, but there's some swappability going on here. So there's custom potential. In fact, going back to the pirate, I would love to see this customized with like a tattered goblin mask put them on a glider, you have dead goblin, if that's not already a thing in Marvel. The purple and green just steers you in that direction though, right? It's a Marvel villain. Even more than that though, up here at the top of the mountain, it will appeal to collectors of different scales too. It's advertised as 1 12th, so it'll fit in with your six inch stuff, but if you do the Vitruvian hacks or three and three quarter, 1 18th, this could be giant skeletons for your battlefields. More the merrier. That's what we always say, right? $30 a piece scheduled for early 2023. I think Super 7 loves to make a habit of bringing out new Ultimates figures where I have no clue about the property itself. Robo don't know Toxic Crusaders. And the only reason I know Toxic Avenger is that back in the 90s, we used to do a lot of hanging out at video stores. I actually never saw the movies. 
I had no clue there was a cartoon, and I do not remember the vintage toys, which these are based off of. Where we are seeing another release of Toxie, but it makes sense. It's his line, and I think this has been tweaked to be more cartoony. They've changed some of the overlays, brightened some of the colors, gave him a smiling head, and there's an alternate sculpt for Blobby. Is that his little buddy? Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just add to it. But I think fans were all bated breath about new characters, so Series 3 delivers on that with Junkyard and Radiation Ranger. What's not to love about a half-man, half-dog? I'm my own best friend. And what's not to love about an evil troop builder? I swear, the 80s, early 90s, it would have been crazy to be in some of the writing rooms or, or developing cartoons, characters for comics. We're gonna take this and this and smash it together. What do you got? Well, I got this and this. Let's smash it together. Oh yeah? I've got this, this, and this. Smash it together. All I know is that Veebs has been talking about other Toxic Crusaders for a while now, and every time he got on that train, I'm just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But now I know, I see the wackiness. I see the fun. And that's what it boils down to. Yeah, as long as they're fun, who cares? $55 said to come out next year. Look at this! It's finally here! Well, okay, the pre-order for the Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi My Hero Academia Endeavor is finally here. We've been seeing this in prototype form for a while, and I think the last figure in the series, was it Todoroki? It's been a few minutes since he's come out, so it's good to see something new. And seeing the final form in all its glorious colors and add-ons and plug-ins, it just brings it to life. With Endeavor, it's even more beautiful with all those fire effects. The oranges, the yellows, the reds. That plays so nicely off the blues of the costume. But it also, after a minute of staring at it, you're kind of, wait, what is going on here? And that's not helped by the craziness of Revel Tech joints where it, it, you never know where the parts are going to go. Amazing Yamaguchi always kind of bends the laws of physics when it comes to action figures. Endeavor's look from the series, though, plays nicely into swappable eyes because there's, well, they say seven of those, but I look at this picture and I think there's eight. But I may be wrong about that. Maybe they're counting oddly somehow. Bottom line, there are so many facial features you can pull off with this character. But it being Endeavor, it's mostly disappointed, snobby, or mad. Or determined. How's that? That's one of them too. But along with all that, which is a crazy amount of accessories, there's also alternate hands and a smartphone. I'll admit it, I've cooled down on my My Hero Academia buying. I think I got Bakugo, never opened them, skipped Todoroki, but this looks good enough to jump back on the wagon, go back, open what I haven't, and buy what I skipped. It's just that good. Look at this thing. Stupid, fantastic looking toys. It's crazy. Different prices for different outlets. The cheapest that I have found is $85 and should be out later this year. Kicking over into Hasbro, on the Marvel Legends front, they've shown new prototypes for the <laughs> what if Infinity Ultron Wave Hawkeyes? Clint does end up with that battle damage they added after the initial renders. They showed good grief. Was it last year sometime? But that's just some extra flair. Clint's always getting damaged somehow. But overall, a nice representation of Barton from the Disney Plus series. When it comes to Kate, though, for some reason, the purple of her costume skewed more into magenta land. And it makes it brighter. And I think that overemphasizes the light brown of her hair where it was very, very dark in the show. I do like the changes they've made to the hand setup though. In the original renders, she had a grip left and a release right because she's right-handed and then there was two fists to go along with that. In these newest pictures, it appears they took away the fists or we just don't see them in these pictures. And besides the right-handed grip, they gave her a right grip and a left release, which means she's shooting left-handed, too. Because in the show, I think she was ambidextrous, right? I remember thinking at some points, oh, she's shooting from the other side. And then for Clint, since he's left-handed, there's a grip right, a release left, and two fists. They also showed complete pictures of the Build-A-Figure Infinity Ultron, and it wasn't until now that I realized, oh, wow, he skips leg day, huh? But it's a neat design that completely works, and it'll fit back into that what-if wave. This is Marvel Legends. You know that's not all there is to show. Show. Out of the blue, GameStop also posted their exclusive Gamerverse, Mr. Negative, and Inner Demons pack from the Spider-Man game. This is something that people have been asking for for a long time, and it's nice to finally see it in plastic. And if you're a more comic-centric type collector, 
It also works there too because Mr. Negative's look is essentially the same from game to comic. And it's the same for the inner demons who here has several weapon loadouts, several mask options so you can army build it. Get you some inner demons to surround Mr. Negative. But if you buy multiple packs of this, you're gonna end up with several Mr. Negatives. I've already seen suggestions of, well, you could just take an extra Mr. Negative, make the rose, which works, so there's options. Or I've seen the Happy Hogan pack on eBay for cheaper than it originally was, so you could reuse some of those for some inner demons, but you're gonna end up with a lot of caramel Iron Mans, or caramel, depending on where you live. That would also give you some inner demons with the ties, make them even more different. Either way, $50 said to drop next month which sounds really really odd <laughs> these days we're used to oh it's a pre-order it comes out next year cool again marvel legends that's not all as i was walking in here they announced the 90s x-men animated series mystique looks to be a lot of reuse which is the name of the game when it comes to this but is well i can't tell if it's a whole new head or if it's the same head with a new hair sculpt. And even there, it's hard to tell because it's kind of the same, just maybe curled different. I had about 30 seconds as I was walking from that room to this room. So, and as we all know, I'm just looking at thin air here. Or well, I'm looking at lights and a wall. Picture's not actually there. The thing that sticks out at me is, oh, that's a cute little Kurt. No pre-orders yet. The tweet says that'll come later this summer. But hey, since we were just talking about dudes in suits, Preternia on Twitter has posted up pictures of the upcoming Hasbro Fortnite Victory Royale series Deluxe Ghost Brutus. You companies have got to slow down on the titles. There's so many words. Let's take this, 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 and a little bit of that. Smash it all together. Yeah, Jazzware snuck out a Brutus near the end of that line. I think it's hitting Ross at the moment. But this is different enough to stand on its own two feet. Still dude in suit, but with the different color scheme, the welding mask, the weapons array. Yeah, that, this feels like, oh, I need this one too. Preternia also alerted us to a pre-order page on Amazon for Renegade Shadow, who again, skews into dude in suit, but looks a bit more tactical. Now I have my soft spot for the food type items, the wacky, the zany, but man, the, even the human characters are cool looking in this line. Plus they can fill out crowds and pictures, or you can make them individuals in other lines. It works so many ways. The Fortnite line, but possibilities and fun. Like I said, listings on Amazon, but they're not currently available. They may be popping in and out. And like you saw from the intro, I just now finally secured my man cake, who hasn't been officially announced. None of these have been officially announced. Hasbro, you gotta get some scoops out there. You gotta get some info. You gotta do some solicitations. You gotta, hell, leak some pictures, something, anything. We wanna be excited. We wanna get pre-orders in. We want to buy these toys. Help us help you. Help us help you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. We are still in the midst of Yojo June, so you know what that means. More Hasbro G.I. Joe classified series news. Comic Hero was shown as a digital render back in February. Pre-order means new pretty promotional pictures. As expected, some Storm Shadow reuse, but only enough to connect the two characters visually. There's enough new parts here to make you think, oh, well, that's completely different. Oh, well, except for those parts. Right. But, oh man, look at those parts. I mean, that's not even Storm Shadow's masked head, as similar as it may be. It's a new sculpt. What wasn't expected, though, was the $34 price tag. Oh. It comes with a few more accessories than your standard release, and yeah, it is Amazon exclusive, but that is a harsh, swift ninja kick to the wallet. In fact, by comparison, that makes the Amazon exclusive Blue Ninja 2-pack a steal at $45. That's twice the figures, twice the accessories for $10 more. I guess you could say twice the reuse, too, but there is a new head for the female, and then the Neato masks. Those are awesome. And hell, with standard figures being $25 these days, this is actually $5 cheaper than that. Like I said, Amazon exclusives, both were still up for pre-order last I looked. Links are in the description. And then, like they've been doing every week of June, they're announcing two characters. Nothing to see, just names. And this week, it was Tunnel Rat and Snow Job. 2023 is looking to be stacked with new characters, and that's good. That's fun. I'm sure we'll see some reissues in between, but... Mm, 
It's characters like this that keep the line going, that keeps my excitement going. And then finally, let's finish it off with some Star Wars news because you know it's bread and butter, baby. Obi-Wan season is still in full swing, so why wouldn't we get more characters from that show? Tala in her Imperial uniform kicks off the next wave, and while I would have liked to seen her Rebel costume, it's more exciting. I'm good with this too because it adds to that Imperial shelf, even though it doesn't really add to that Imperial shelf, does it? There's also one JAC or one Jack. On one hand, probably should have been Forlom, but on the other, you also have that problem of making the Star Wars universe seem way smaller than it is. So I'm also okay with this being a different droid. Just like IG-11 and IG-88, I'm sure there are more models of this droid running around the universe. I love the darker, more solid color to it. The hip holsters, the bandolier, he's ready to throw down. But I think I'm most excited about the Phase 2 Purge Trooper because when it popped up on the show, my son and I were like, is that a Purge Trooper? But you couldn't see the changes made. It wasn't until they debuted the figure, called it Phase 2, and gave us pretty pictures that I realized, oh, they've integrated some Stormtrooper features into the helmet, which is cool. It's like an evolution between the eras, you know? that There would be changes, like we see with the Phase 1, Phase 2 clones and all the other armors throughout. Not to even mention its black clone slash Stormtrooper armor. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Phase 2 Purge Trooper and One Jack are Walmart exclusives. Why? And even though the official Star Wars site said these would go up for pre-order at noon on Thursday, no, we ain't seen shit. At least at the time I'm recording this. For Tala though, she is a regular release and the beginning of one of the future waves, which I don't know what how many waves are between now and then. So many pre-orders just floating in the air right now. But all the online retailers list her for May of 2023, so right around the corner. And that's all for this week. Probably not. Actually, I think I saw some McFarlane stuff on Target that went up and then disappeared. It may be up by now, but we'll talk about that next week because I have to sort through all the pictures, see what's new, see what's old, see what's going on. If you're interested in any of these pictures without me, I'll take a little of this and a little of this and smash it together. Oh, let's add a little bit of that too. Let's sprinkle it on top. Smash! I'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh Front page Saturday at noon. Jumping back to G.I. Joe, they announced that uh, there would be another Instagram Live next week. And then to finish off June, there would be an, a big full-blown YouTube fan stream. I think they said there would be another classified pre-order next week. And then I'm sure we're going to hear two more names and then two more names. If not more... With the YouTube, they kind of go more extravagant, don't they? So we may see some digital renders. They also announced that Transformers would get a YouTube fan stream next week. So there's more there too. They're just... just it doesn't stop. And we are getting close to San Diego Comic-Con where they said they were going to be displaying things. In years past, that would have meant some radio silence building up to San Diego. That doesn't seem to be the case this year. And you know what? I can't complain because that just means there's more stuff to talk about. If you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this... I'll always catch you on the foosh. It's weird to be talking about San Diego again after the past few years. I gotta think it's gonna be toned back, scaled down a bit though. I've been to a few Star Wars celebrations and while the one a couple of weeks ago had the same energy, the same feel, that same excitement of, oh my everything, Star Wars, it was, especially when you go down the aisles, it was very spread out and I think they had less vendors in more space to keep some distance. Is San Diego going to be the same way? Have they already announced that it is and I just don't pay attention to things like that? I am kind of a, if you haven't noticed over the past few years, a seat of my pants kind of guy. I just kind of, oh, that's cool. Let's give it a shot. I ain't going to do any research or anything before getting out there. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it and see what happens.